The tragic case of eight-year-old Tori Stafford was the main focus of question period today. Terry Lynn McClintock, who pled guilty to Stafford's murder in 2010, has been transferred from prison to an Indigenous healing lodge in Saskatchewan. The Conservatives were calling on the government to reverse that decision. Canadians aren't looking for a review. They're looking for action. They want to see this government reverse this decision. Will the Prime Minister do what he has the power to do and reverse this decision? Our hearts go out to the family of Tory Stafford for the loss they endured and have lived with these past nine years. The Minister has asked that the Commissioner of Correctional Services review such decisions to ensure they are done properly and in accordance with long-standing policy. These weren't bad practices. These were horrific crimes, and they deserve to be punished. The Prime Minister has the ability to reverse this decision. Will he do so? The previous government, in 2014, transferred this individual to a medium security facility. She is still in a medium security facility now. The level to which the member opposite is playing politics with a terrible tragedy is yet again an example of uh, the depths to which the members opposite continue to stoop. And Catherine Cullen is here with more on the story. Hey, Catherine, I know we first learned about this yesterday, but the government has changed its position today. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, and, and in fact, it's, I think, important to note that Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale was giving an interview about this yesterday and his, uh, to, to another media outlet. And his tone during that particular interview was one where he was deferring to officials, saying, you know, they make these decisions about where a particular uh, prisoner should be placed, taking into account public safety and a multitude of other factors, deferring to uh, the, the, the judgment of those particular officials. And he also said during that interview, uh, he talked about trying to rectify McClintock's, quote, bad practices. You heard a reference to that in the clip a moment ago from Andrew Shear, and I think some people really took exception to that particular language. Bad practices does perhaps seem like a bit of a benign term when you consider the gravity of what happened here, the brutality um, of, of the, 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 the circumstances of Tory Stafford's murder. So when Ralph Goodale came down the stairs today to speak to journalists, uh, first of all, he made a point of expressing his uh, sympathy for Tory Stafford's family and just how appalled he was by this particular crime, but then he went on to say this. Um, I note that uh, back in 2013, uh, my predecessor in this, uh, in this job, Mr. Blaney, uh, observed, and I quote, I, that is the minister, do not control the security classification of individual prisoners. That is, in fact, the law. Uh, that having been said, uh, I have uh, earlier today uh, asked the, uh, the Commissioner of the Correctional Service of Canada uh, to undertake a complete review of the facts of this case to ensure that the law and all of the long-standing policies of the Correctional Service of Canada have been properly applied. So a different approach today uh, insofar as the fact that they're going to review this decision, Vashi. And also important to note um, that Ralph Goodale is saying ultimately he doesn't have control over this. He doesn't have control over any individual prisoner's security status in his office says they do not also have control over where a particular prisoner is placed. That that's not something the minister is responsible for. The Conservatives take a very different approach to this. They point out that they made changes to, for instance, whether Paul Bernardo was allowed to have conjugal visits, Clifford Olson's um, pension. They say they were able to shut down both of those things. That's obviously not the same as where a particular prisoner is placed, but they keep insisting there's something the government can do. The government says that is just simply not the case. And, and CBC spoke to Rodney Stafford, Tory's father, yesterday. How has he reacted to, or how did he react to learning of the transfer? Uh, certainly very upset about it. In fact, it's the Stafford family who uh, let the media know because Correctional Services Canada says they can't release this kind of information. They're the ones who revealed that this transfer had taken place. He says that he is very upset by it, but uh, let's hear that from him. The magnitude of this crime, somebody of that like nature should not be warranted like a basically not a free pass but it's like her levels of security are being dropped as as she goes but there's there's no need for it she's there for a conviction she was convicted she should be in a maximum security prison just like everybody else serving her sentence 
And just another piece of information to put this all into context, something that we learned today, this healing facility is both, according to Ralph Goodale, a medium and minimum security facility. Um, some people in the area tell us it does, though, not actually have fences. The Liberals said repeatedly today that it was under the Conservatives that McClintock was transferred to a medium security facility, but of course not necessarily this medium security facility. And I think it's the nature of this particular facility that has upset so many people. All right, thanks. thanks a lot, Catherine. It's CBC's Catherine Cullen. And we are back now with the power panel. Amanda Alvaro, Tim Powers, Francoise Bavin, and Chris Hall. Chris, I'm going to start with you because uh, it's a really tough story, I think. It's, um, it, it's an, an awful, awful tragedy. And it was hard for a multitude of reasons to, to watch Q, QP today, I think. Yeah, and you know, look, the Conservatives have always played the law and order card. It, it works with their political base, and in this particular case, it is a horrible crime that I mm -hmm. think anyone who lives in Ontario in particular will remember mm -hmm. graphically. And, uh, you know, for the Liberals, this is a difficult question. It, it, people will remember it, and to not be able to, re to respond as effectively as they should have yesterday when it was first, uh, first revealed and when uh, there was an interview done with Ralph Goodell, they were playing catch-up today by trying to say, like, this is not the kind of discussion we we want to have. We have to be respectful of the family. Uh, it is a very difficult question, but politically, um, you can see where the Conservatives are trying to come from with it. Yeah, and it's a bit rich for the Prime Minister, though his tone was right, though, not to say don't play politics with this. What did Ralph Goodale just do? He cited a quote from 2013 when Stephen Blaney was the Minister of Public Safety about policy. Um, take some responsibility here for what you might be able to do. Yes, it is now good that he's reached out to the head of corrections, but you're saying don't play politics and don't insert it in here yourself. The Liberals have had a, a couple of bad weeks on files like this, not to diminish what happened to Tory Stafford to, uh, as a file, but that's how it's often described. You have this case, uh, and then you have the case, of course, of the, uh, the, the convicted murderer who's receiving funds or was from Veterans Affairs. And from a political perspective to the broader world, uh, it can be seen that, you know, the Liberals are missing the boat and not as a tune for a Prime Minister who speaks about being attuned to people's needs and sensitivities and woes and pain to being attuned to all of that. The last point I, I'd make, and I, I think Catherine was, uh, was highlighting it, is yes, it's true. A minister, and rightfully so, can't go in and say, move prisoner X to uh, facility Y, but you can insert and direct policy at a higher level. And it's astounding to me, if it didn't happen, that somebody at Corrections Canada didn't get that moving this person to this particular facility wasn't going to create an outcry. I mean, what is going on out there? That has to be a lens you apply when you're in Corrections Canada, how people are going to view the, the justice process. And if you do this, you're not helping uh, make a compelling argument that you know what you're doing. Amanda? Well, I think that the politics that was at play today, though, Tim, wasn't just about the what happened in 2013, 2014 versus what is happening today. It's about the demands that the opposition is making, demands that they know the government can't meet. So to say a review is not enough, action must take place today, even though, and you just said it, the government certainly can't be in a position to say prisoner X can be moved to, uh, you know, facility Y. They can't make that demand and make it happen. The opposition knows that, and that's the kind of politics. And I can stomach a lot of politics, but today was unfathomable to me. To use that, to use this family, to use the tragedy as a political wedge the way they did, just as, you know, politics aside, as a mom, to watch that, I thought was so disturbing. Opposition knows that the government cannot take it a place further than to put it under review. That's as far as they can take it. So to, su to suggest to this family who's gone through everything and more, that more could be done than an action could be taken today, was just pure falsehood. It was really sad politics. It, except, sorry, just, really just a quick, yeah, yeah, to respond, I didn't mean to cut Francois off, uh, but look at the case of that gentleman receiving or killer receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs. They have changed that policy. They've started to a change that policy. A policy takes time. It yeah, that took two weeks, Amanda. But, you, but, but, and, but I think, hang on. Potentially this could take 48 hours. We don't know. But it can't happen to suggest that, it mu that the action must be in place today is to really undermine the the the. the, the the absolute enormity of this tragedy and what it takes to make things happen. It contradicts what 
the government just did. It changed a policy because people rightly were offended by it, of because course. the policy was wrong. So that, I think, okay, is what I we're getting at. Swasser. Sorry, Francois. What do you think? I sat as justice critic, and honestly, uh, liberals, conservatives, they all played games with, with cases like this. Um, which horrifies me, by the way, as a lawyer. Um, there's supposed to be separation of power. There's a couple of things that come to my mind when I, I, I look at this uh, tragic, really tragic situation. I remember uh, we worked so hard to the uh, uh, reviewing the, uh, the so-called Charter of Victims' Rights. Mm. And that was supposed to be the most important thing that the conservative government was bringing. It was supposed to solve, bring the victim and their family at the forefront. I remember at the time as justice critic for the NDP saying to the minister, I've got a problem because there's no real obligation through it. Because what makes me really feel so bad today is to see the father's reaction mm -hmm. because there's a problem in the system. I don't care about the political uh, games that conservatives and liberals are, are playing with this. Um, I just hope that they, they, they tone it down a bit because there's lives, there's people mm -hmm. lives in there, there's real victims in there. And maybe we should look into how come the parents the father uh, tells us in his testimony today in front of the camera, if, if they're in shock, it's, it, it's because nobody from the, uh, the, the, um, the service really talked to the, the family and say, here's what we're planning on doing. It's not a, qu a question of, co of necessarily confidentiality, but to maybe low the, the, the um, how do you say that, the blow, so that they well, won't soften be... Soften the blow. Soften the blow, thank you. Um, and maybe that would be uh, yeah. different. And maybe if the liberal government had answered differently and, and, and say, you know what, we're not supposed to, but we'll, we'll try to get to the bottom of it. It's as if as soon as it's the opposition who ask a question, they automatically have to say the reverse, the complete opposite. And then when they see the reaction, then they go back into the thing and say, oh, you know what, we'll review the policy. Oh, you know what, maybe we'll ask uh, some people to review the situation. Can, can I just make one yeah. small point? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. we got to go uh, Struck yeah. by how many times the conservatives asked the same question with the same, uh, we now understand to be untrue uh, allegation or ass ass assertion that uh, the prime minister can personally intervene and do this. Exactly. You have the power to overtake this. Um, this was a real political piece of theater, and we'll see ultimately now that the family has obviously been seen to, to, mm -hmm. to be concerned about it, have made their case that really she should be in a maximum security, let alone medium. Um, this, I don't think, is going to serve anybody particularly well in the, in the House of Commons today. Yeah, Mr. Stafford is planning to come to Parliament Hill to ask yeah. for a policy change on in November, I believe. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thanks so much to the, show, uh, the Power Panel. Thanks to Amanda Albaro, Tim Powers, Francoise Bavin, and Chris Hall.